Uh, okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Eddie Mafarden. I'm the Product Development Manager at R&D here at Southeast Water in Victoria, Australia. And I'm gonna to present to you today this results from some of the trials we've been doing with our SOTO leak detection sensor that we've developed here at Southeast Water. So um, hopefully you'll find it interesting. And look, just a, an apology for my appearance. We've been in COVID lockdown here for uh, what seems like most of my life. So I haven't seen a barber in a long time, but my missus threatens to kick me out soon if I don't. So I will be getting a haircut soon, but apologies for my current appearance. Okay, so what's driving this SOTO, this little innovation we call SOTO, this vibration detection sensor? Um, what is the challenge to Southeast Water? And it's obviously non-revenue water loss. This is not specific to Southeast Water. This is a problem across many water utilities. And for us, it's considered something like 13% of our water consumption disappears as non-revenue water. And with the cost of water rising, with the increased demand, reduced supply through climate change and drought, this is becoming an increasing problem. So the intention is SOTO, the intention was for us to engineer a solution that could help us reduce that non-revenue water loss. And that's where SOTO comes in. So the, the SOTO sensor is intended to detect water leaks on our infrastructure, on our network. It's not intended to detect water leaks on people's properties because that's easy to do with constant flow water meters. The vibration sensor that SOTO is, can, is designed to pick up vibrations from our network. Uh, and in conjunction to that, it's uh, designed to leverage the capabilities of a digital water meter. And obviously, digital water meters can deliver, they deliver a daily payload uh, every day back to base. And SOTO can launch off that payload and send a flag indicating whether or not it has detected a leak. And part of the other drivers are things like identifying leaks in our network, not just to reduce the water loss, but also to prevent any costly bursts like that beautiful photograph you can see on the right there, the damage and the reputational damage that comes from a, a burst like that. Uh, and obviously the other big driver is that we would like to detect the leaks in our network ourselves first before our customers do who ring us up telling us that they see water coming up through the, um, coming up through the road through their um, nature strip. So what is it? What is SOTO? Effectively in a nutshell, it is a cost effective um, leak detection vibration sensor that can be packaged within a digital water meter. So you can see a great little photo of it there on the right. It's the little black uh, plastic housing that's mounted on a plate on top of the flow tube. So any vibration signal that comes along the uh, water main uh, and service line will vibrate that flow tube and in turn vibrate the uh, SOTO sensor inside it. Um, it's designed, as I said before, to detect utility infrastructure leaks, not the residence leaks. And the business drivers here at Southeast Water that have enabled us to develop this little innovative product um, are, the strat are our strategy around water conservation, efficient operation, digital metering, and the fact that the market didn't have a product available that, that was like this. And also, of course, here at Southeast Water and IOTA, um, innovation and product development is part of our DNA. We have the expertise in-house with engineering and with project management to be able to, to, be able to deliver an, a product like this. Uh, and just as a final summary, the three primary design brief drivers, the requirements for this little, little sensor, um, the three primary drivers were that it had to be minimal cost. So it could only be a fraction of the cost of a digital water meter. Any, if it was expensive, then it wouldn't fly, obviously. It needed to be small enough to be packaged within a digital water meter, but at the same time, sensitive enough to be benchmarked against listening sticks. So listening sticks were the benchmark performance we were aiming for and listening sticks are those thousand uh, dollar sensors that um, a bloke stands out in the field attaches it to a water meter and with headphones listens for vibrations how does it work uh, well in the middle of the night when the network is at its quietest so the vibrations are at its lowest um, the soto sensor takes multiple snapshots over a period of time um, to look for vibrations in the network that may be emanating from a leak. Uh, and then if it does think it's detected a leak, it attaches a flag to the digital meter payload. So when the digital meter sends in the morning, it's payload information attached to that is a flag that says, yes, I've detected a leak or no, I have not. And at the same time, there are other smarts that we have around the system that try and prevent false positives from occurring. Things like if there's water consumption on the property, when a snapshot's taken, then that snapshot is ignored. And, various other little things that we do to avoid those false positives. And false positives haven't been a problem that we've seen so far in our network 
uh, our network testing. So today I'm going to present some of the results from those tests that we've done, these final trials um, of the SOTO's performance. And these trials are not surprisingly, they're intended to investigate SOTO's capability, its ability to, do, um, to actually perform as per design. Will it do, will it do what it's intended to do, detect those leaks in our network? And we want to learn other things too at the same time. What do different pipe materials, uh, how do they impact on those vibration signals? Do they attenuate the signal? Um, things like, do we, do we need to have a SOTO, if we deploy this product in the field, do we need one on every house or can it be on every second or third house? Is it sensitive enough that we can, um, that we can spread it out across several houses and so not necessarily have a SOTO on every single property? And then we want to learn what data it actually generates. So the information we get back from it, um, what can we do with that information? What, what can we do with it to Im improve our business outcomes? And then there's the various other things you normally do with product development testing, things like looking for failures in, this, in the product itself or leaks in the little housing, or are there any design improvements we can do for future versions of SOTO itself? So what I'll do is now take you through the results of the trials and I'm just going to focus on 10 of them. Now, sorry, I didn't get these 10 on a single slide. They're kind of spread over these two slides, but that's okay because I'm just going to summarize this quickly. But well, these 10 trials, um, uh, we've obviously done a lot of different trials of prototypes that we've developed over the years, um, rig tests, et cetera, et cetera. But these trials are targeted in-field leak trials. So effectively what that is, is when a resident rings us up and says, there's water coming out of the nature strip, um, instead of sending a crew out there to dig up the pipe and repair the leak, we hold them back for several days. And instead we send a team out there and install these water meters embedded with SOTO around where we think the leak is. And we listen, we get the payload information every day from those water meters with SOTO embedded and look at the vibration signals coming in. Then once the leak is repaired, we look at how that signal changes. So that's effectively what these targeted leak trials are, and they really are, this is where the rubber hits the road for SOTO. This is really a great indication of its performance long-term, and whether it meets its need, whether it meets its design intent. So of these, just to summarize these 10 different trials that I'm highlighting today, of them, seven of, seven of them were successful in that SOTO did pick up the leak and flag that there was a leak in our network on seven of those 10 trials. Three of them, it was not successful, did not pick up the leak. Uh, and on all, on all three of those trials, as you can see indicated in my little um, uh, slides there, and all three of them, those leaks were extremely small uh, as characterized by our operations people because um, what they were was um, you ended up with a damp nature strip as opposed to water spilling into a gutter and running down the road. Um, so these were extremely small leaks um, that SOTO was not, well, not able to detect. And in conjunction, we tested obviously against the listening sticks that we're um, um, testing the system against, and they also were not able to pick up these leaks on the network. So what I'll do now is rather than go through this summary any further, I'll drill down into some of the interesting highlights, uh, the results from each of the trials that we got from these SOTO trials. It's quite interesting. Hopefully you find them interesting too. So the first one I wanna highlight is the trial we did at Rye where a resident had contacted us about water heard running through the stormwater system. Nothing was coming up to the surface. They just heard water in the stormwater system. So we held back the repair crew where we sent out some guys to install six sotos around where we thought the leak was. And you can see my terrible little sketch on the bottom left side of that slide there. Um, the six blue dots represent where the sotos were located on the property. So we swapped out the resident's existing water meter, mechanical water meter, for a digital meter containing the SOTO. So now it represented a SOTO network, a SOTO infused network, if you will. And four of those SOTOs were um, located on properties that were adjacent to the AC main. So that main um, is where we thought the leak was on. And two of the SOTOs um, were actually on a UPVC main that were teed off that AC main. And that's SOTOs number one, two, three, and one, two, six. And the results were very interesting. So the picture on the right uh, is a timeline of all six of the SOTOs and the vibration signals that they were detecting on this network. And each column represents a day. So each column represents the digital meters payload that it's sending in, the SOTO information it's sending in. Um, so four of them, four of the SOTOs had very strong signals. And uh, we're talking 10 to 100 times beyond the threshold uh, limit that we had set for a leak. 
a very strong signals. This was obviously a large leak, but the two sodos around the corner and on the UPVC main, you can see in that image there, were not picking up any vibrations. And after the repair, there's a great visual representation there that after the repair, the four that were vibrating dropped off to nothing. Um, the vibrations went away. So it was a, that's a really good indication of how SOTO works, how the vibration can trigger a threshold and flag that a leak has been detected. Uh, now, a couple of other interesting elements of this test. Um, one was that the further a SOTO was 80 meters from the leak, and it was picking up a strong enough signal to trigger our threshold, which is a really interesting performance result. And the second interesting thing on this trial is one of the properties picking up the vibration signal actually had a PE service line. So that was one of the big questions to us. Could we pick up vibration through a PE material as opposed to a standard copper service line? And the answer in this case was yes, although this was a larger leak. Uh, and now there's two images on the bottom left there. They're my, um, uh, uh, what we call heat maps and a red dot indicates a strong vibration being picked up by Soto and a green dot is um, obviously a no leak um, vibration signal being picked up. So those, those two images are before and after the repair. So we're playing with these heat maps to try and learn what is the best way to present this information from Soto. And it's kind of a cool way to target in directly where a leak is being um, observed. So the second trial I wanna highlight for you is one we did at Frankston. This is similar in that a leak was heard in the stormwater system, but was not coming to the surface. Um, now this one's different from the previous one in the water that was running in the stormwater system had nothing to do with the leak that was detected in the end. The water in the stormwater system was from irrigation from an oval up the road. But you can see the image in the bottom left there, that is the leak that was detected on this, um, on this, uh, in this area. Now, what's interesting is that water was not coming to the surface and may have been running underground for God knows how long because the sand, the soil or the earth around the Frankston area where this trial was done is a sandy soil. So it disappears, the water can disappear into the ground um, and not come to the surface. So Soto, however, the vibration signals were very strong and allowed us to dig up and find this uh, leak very quickly. And you can see the, the heat map is again, is a great representation of where the leak actually is with one of the Soto showing a strong red signal and the others are rounded orange and the further away you go, the more green those dots get. And the columns on the right represent the four strongest vibration signals from the SOTOs. And then after the repair, those signals drop off. Now you see one of them, number 51, I think it is, my eyes aren't the best. One of them still shows a hump after the repair and that is because um, we investigated that and that is because there is a leak actually on their property. So um, that vibration came from a leak on their property. Um, so yeah, that was an interesting result from Frankston trial. And also at Frankston, this is something else we learned about SOTO. We keep learning these new things as we deploy these tests. It's really interesting what we're uncovering. So what happened here was I was getting a strong vibration signal. You can see on the left graph there, um, there's a very strong vibration element, but I couldn't work out what it was coming from because it was too distant from the leak to make any sense. And from some... <laughs> Um, very careful investigation, we discovered that the stop tap, which is only about 100 millimetres from where the SOTO itself sits, was seeping. And it was a tiny, tiny little seep. It was not pooling or anything. You can see in that image, that image, it's just wet around the handle. Uh, but it was so close to SOTO that it was still strong enough, even that small seep, to actually vibrate the sensor and indicate that there was a leak detected. As soon as we repaired that stop um, valve, stopped that seeping from happening, the vibration signal disappeared. That was an extraordinary result because Southeast Water is responsible um, to manage leaks on stop taps. So this is actually an important business driver for us. But that was something we did not expect to see in our trials that we had done. Okay, moving on. Another interesting result. So this is uh, something else we did not expect. And this was at this site, after the leak was repaired, I expected to see the vibrations disappear. But you can see on those five graphs on the left, each successive day, that, that is one SOTO sensor, each successive day, that vibration growing stronger and stronger. And this was after the repair. So obviously something wasn't right here. And I went down to the operations group and told them something didn't seem right after the repair, the uh, vibration hadn't gone away. So they sent their crew back out and dug up the repair work and discovered that 
and discovered that the clamps bolts had not been tightened properly. And that image is perfect on the right there. You can see the leaking repair. So Soto actually operated as, um, allowed us to make a warranty claim on the repair work here. This was uh, something we did not expect to get out of Soto, um, but, but these being uncovered by these trials we're doing, it's kind of a cool little uh, um, um, benefit we had not expected. Now this is another, uh, I'll, I want to highlight this one because um, it shows how sensitive the vibration sensor actually is because at this site, this one Soto sensor kept showing this little high frequency bump you can see on those images on the, on the bottom of the screen there. We could work out where it was from. It wasn't from a network leak. And while we're working outside this woman's property on this residence property, the woman came out and complained to us that she knew she had a leak on her property somewhere. It was killing her plants. She had paid for a plumber to come out to find the leak. He trekked everywhere, could not find it. And certainly our digital meter with a SOTO in it was not registering a constant flow. So it's suggested to us there was not a leak on her property, but that little high frequency vibration and the fact that she had come down and complained she had a leak somewhere that no one could find kind of raised the flag to us. So we removed the digital meter with SOTO in it and instead put on there a very high performance meter that could detect extremely low flows. And that meter picked up a tiny constant flow through it, meaning that she was right. There was a tiny pinhole leak on her property somewhere. And even though a standard water meter couldn't pick it up, the Soto vibration sensor actually could pick up that high frequency bump you can see on the image in the bottom there. That was an interesting result. Again, another demonstration of its sensitivity and performance that we had not expected. Okay, so the final trial I'm gonna to talk to, I'm probably running out of time here. Um, the final trial result that I'm going to talk to that was interesting was um, here at Cranbourne, I think this one was. Um, a team was sent out before uh, we went out there to repair a leak. Water was coming out of the road and the nature strip. And they dug up the road, dug up the nature strip, as you can see in the photograph on the right there. Couldn't find the leak. Couldn't find it anywhere in that area where the water was coming up. Um, so we went out uh, with the Soto sensors and installed them around that area. Um, to see where, where we thought the leak was. And sure enough, as you can see on my little um, heat map in the middle of the uh, image there, the red Soto indicating and the orange Sotos on the other side of the road indicating the leak was somewhere in that area. And that area was some 50 meters up the road from where the water was actually emerging from the, from the ground. So there was no water anywhere near where the leak actually was. So this again was another benefit of Soto that we had not expected that it could pick up these vibrations for leaks that were emerging from the earth 50 meters away from where the leak actually was. And you can see um, this again, um, Soto's up to 80 meters away, we're picking up that vibration on our network. This one was not as strong a leak, it was a smaller leak than the, the earlier one that I had mentioned. So the vibration 80 meters away was much smaller and I don't think it was actually triggering the, um, the leak detection threshold, but it was close enough. Um, it was close enough to be an interesting result for us. So another very interesting result we had not expected. And you can see the pre and post repair vibration signal graphs there I have on the left, sort of showing how after the repair, all those vibration signals disappeared from Soto. So and I've got here just the final slide um, um, showing the daily payload vibration signals from all six of those sensors that were out there, all six of those Soto sensors. You, you can see the strong signal coming through before and after the repair, um, that signal drops off to nothing. One of the, um, the top sort of actually indicates some vibration still being detected and that actually was a, our mistake. The, the digital meter we had installed and that probably wasn't done properly and it come loose and was leaking. Um, so it was a, a, an interesting result. So that is a great little timeline showing how Soto before and after the repair can actually flag that there is a leak there in the network. So that's it for the highlighted trials. I just wanted to show everybody today. Hopefully you found that interesting. Um, just to summarize, Soto is um, a product and innovation at Southeast Water we've been working on now for, I think it's about three years. And it's gone through many periods of development of prototypes, A, B and C prototypes, and many, many phases of testing, lab testing, rig testing. But we are now in the middle of uh, infield, genuine rubber hits the road, test of its performance. Can it do what it's meant to do? And so far to date, we've been extremely happy with the results. It has met or exceeded our expectations with the performance being similar to or better than the benchmark listening sticks. And we feel from what we've seen so far, we feel it's likely Soto will detect knowing our network and their arrangement, the makeup of our network and where leaks are typically found, 
it's likely that Soto will pick up the majority of the leaks in our network. And it can act as an early warning to leaks in our network before the customer even sees the water coming out of the ground. But we have uh, obviously, and not surprisingly, we have determined and, and shown that UPVC mains or poly lines, they do attenuate a vibration signal. Not completely, we still can get vibration signals through those materials. It just probably needs to be a larger, a larger leak before the signal gets through. Uh, and the next steps for us, we're continuing these trials. Um, we've got um, those um, targeted leak trials I highlighted for you now. We're continuing to do many more of those over the coming months, maybe over the next year or so, because they are absolutely a great learning process for us to learn what SOTA can do and does it deliver on its expectations. Uh, and in conjunction with that, we're doing other rig tests and so on and so forth but we're doing large batch trials. So a thousand SOTOs are currently being installed around Melbourne in three big trial areas. Um, this has all been delayed because of COVID unfortunately, but um, that is underway at the moment. So we wanna learn how SOTO will work in a group as a batch group, which is what typically what we expect to see long-term if it's deployed. And in early next year, another four and a half thousand SOTOs, um, again in large batch trials um, that will be deployed to learn what we can from the um, from SOTOs. And then at the same time, we'll be doing a long-term durability testing. It needs to last, SOTO needs to last as long as the digital meter itself, which is something like 10 plus years. Uh, and also, as a final comment on the side, what we've been doing is also investigating, um, developing some high performance prototypes of SOTO. So these are high sensitivity versions to try and see whether we can improve SOTO's performance on those materials like UPVC that attenuate the vibrations. So um, it's not an obvious answer, just making a, a, se a sensor more sensitive to increase the signal does not necessarily lead to a good result because you also raise the noise floor, which can swamp that signal. So those investigations are underway at the moment. It's interesting the results we're getting and we maybe, I can maybe report on that further down the line. But thank you very much. That's the end of my um, presentation. Hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, and I'm happy to take any uh, questions.